Welcome back to Open Line, talking about home health care here in Middle Tennessee. We have Neil Amrine with us, all about care. And, and I want to, in this segment, kind of talk about what are some things that people should be thinking about as their parents age. So I know there's so many people out there that are confronted with this situation now. What are some things they should be thinking about? Well, um, I think the first thing that folks need to be thinking about is that aging is oftentimes a, a safety concern. And that safety concern can be a cognitive level of safety. It can become a physical level of safety. And things that you may have been doing or your loved one's been doing for years or decades in their house, is, you should just be aware of. Um, so if you see any behavioral changes um, with regard to medication management or mismanagement, if there are lots of you know, medications that need to be take, taken throughout the day or at certain times of the day, um, just be aware of those th kinds of things. The prescription themselves um, it's not just the quantity but it's the it's the you know the time of the day that you, you're taking those so you, you need to do it around meal time so that level of consistency and continuity unfortunately medication mismanagement is probably one of the top three or four reasons people get hospitalized so they're given a prescription and then they take too much of it unknowingly or they don't take it or but yeah that's that is that's that's rough so you know best practice might be yeah, Make sure that there's a pill box or, or medication planner. I typically recommend to families to not just have one for a seven day period of time, but to have two. So, you know, you're not surprised when you have to refill that, that pill bottle. And um, you, nobody really can count, looking straight in uh, to a pill bottle, how many pills there are left. So it can help uh, to, to always have that backup planner. And, um, and then you have it you know, sorted Monday, Monday through Sunday. And um, morning, lunchtime, evening, there, there can be all kinds of planners that are out there, but that, that's certainly a precautionary. What about falls? I mean, that's, that's the thing that, as people age, it seems, it puts them in the hospital the most. Mm -hmm. and, and you have some numbers, I think, on falls, like when people fall and ages and that kind of thing. What, what, what do we know about that? Yeah, typically falls, when they take place, um, <clears throat> especially uh, falls for folks in their 70s, uh, there's a very high likelihood, a 65 or 70 percent likelihood that a second fall will take place in a very short period of time, uh, meaning next 18 to 24 months. So um, just kind of be aware of that. Uh, I would say that uh, you know some of the falls can be attributed to very simple things. Hydration is a very important part of, um, you know, we talk about nutrition and technology and all these things, but you, you can't simply have five or six cups of coffee every morning or be drinking coffee and expect to be hydrated when you actually should be drinking water. Um, nutrition, you know, what is the level of nutrition that you have and, and what are, what's your routine? You know, I've, I've uh, come across a number of clients who, you know, their, their main source of, uh, of you know, nutrition is a, t a Twinkie and a Ding Dong. Um, uh, and <laughs> so that's not good. Not, not, not good at all. Uh, the other part of it is be cautious about where you spend time and where your loved one's spending time in their home. Just take a look at are they spending time in probably three or four rooms. In other words, the, the bathroom, of course, uh, their bedroom, probably the living room, and they probably have that specific chair. You know, if they sit in that chair for so many hours or an hour or two at a time and kind of get up, they may get lightheaded. And so, you know, are they using that walker, that cane? Is that something that needs to be introduced? Is that something that the doctor can help facilitate um, and get them comfortable with? And with regard to falls, most of the falls take place in the obvious spot, in, which is the bathroom. You know, whoever came up with the idea of throwing uh, some water on, on a slippery surface and, you know, calling it a shower, um, it, it, that's where, where it happens. And mm -hmm. uh, over 70% of falls take place in that arena. So don't be hesitant to take a look at you know, grab bars and um, things that are safety uh, devices without changing the cosmetic look at the, of the house, just having that ability. Uh, we oftentimes will call folks wall walkers when they're holding onto the wall and going down you know, the hallway instead of using proper safety devices or towel racks are not you know, necessarily the safest thing Yeah, that's thing not yeah. sturdy. All right, that's all right, right, let's go to Ray here. Hello, Ray. Uh, yes. Go right ahead. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I kind of wanted to talk for a minute about uh, the other side of this thing here. That, uh, you may need to turn down your TV. Yeah, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Go right ahead. 
Yeah, I recently had an experience in the year 14 and part of 15 with my mother. She was 83 to 84 years old, very sick with heart disease. <clears throat> and the course of treatment I hear the gentleman talking about there sounds fine. But the other side of this you don't hear a lot about is if you have parents or family members who are cantankerous and they cannot agree between themselves on what course to take, it can leave the kids that are trying to be up there to help with this thing in the worst nightmare of your life. I bet. Um, there were four times in the year 14 that I had to be called up there, and I would usually go up there and be there for three or four hours a day on a daily basis. And four times I went up there when something went wrong and she needed emergency medical treatment. Her husband didn't want her to go to a hospital because that cost money and he didn't want to run up any more medical bills. She wanted to go to the hospital because she needed treatment. Right. And then he had the phone unplugged out of the wall where there was a handicapped, neglected, and abused person there who couldn't get to a phone to call for help. I ended up having to go up there four times and pull out my cell phone, call paramedics to come get this person, transport her to the hospital, and get her treatment. All right, well, that's terrible. And I, I appreciate you calling that, or calling in with that. What, a, what about this issue um, where you're sending an employee into what could be a very contentious situation? Right. Um, great question, and, and there, there are a couple parts to this answer. The, the first is if, um, if I have an employee everything we do we, we go and do a complimentary evaluation within the home within the living room I, uh, I oftentimes will recommend that we have that meeting um, at the worst part of the day and so if it's uh, I want to I want to see what a, a, a nine on a scale of ten looks like in terms of I'm really having a bad day because I'm gonna be um, assigning or uh, matching caregivers on my team to go in and be successful successfully provide care and service so um, whether it's a cognitive issue whether it's a physical issue where it's a combination of both in, in many cases on the political side with regard to um, adult children and having a number of siblings who who's in charge who's on first who's the health care power of attorney who's the financial power of attorney many times they're split and then there's also that uh, daily responsibility. Sometimes the adult sibling or the adult child who's living near mom or dad versus the one who lives four, four or five hundred miles away is is kind of the brunt of you know taking care of the daily routine and understands and they they can get burned out. They can get worn out. Uh, that's where that respite comes into play. And some of the folks that are oftentimes geographically not there or available they come in a couple times a year or they come in around the holidays they're just not as dialed in so having an open level of communication and again taking the preventative steps to identify who's in charge at one point when the health care declines or when there's a, um, a necessary uh, time to engage a financial that is so tough and um, Ray thank you for calling in and sharing that because that could be a very difficult situation. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back, just basically wrap everything up. But we'll take a break. Be back right after this.